medio de la plaza es a la que antes siempre jugaba. I remember I didn't even sing in Spanish until I got here and I felt that I needed to go back to my roots. Me llaman de la la de la voz quebrada. When I got to Berkeley, I thought that I could sing jazz or R&B and pop, but I knew that that wasn't going to make me different from anybody else. I remember I tried the singer showcase three times, singing in English, Aretha Franklin. They were like, no, no, no. Fourth time, I went and I did Ojos Verdes by Concha Huica. And they immediately told me, oh, wait, this is different. I think the most important thing, because you can be talented, you can have the best voice, or you can play the guitar like Pat Metheny, but if you don't have somebody directing the, the concept and a clear concept that is different from everything else, I think it's a little bit difficult. If it wasn't for the Mediterranean Music Institute and Javier Limon, I don't think I'd be where I am right now. It was because of a student at Berkeley who told me if I could sing at his recital a Venezuelan song. When he showed me the song, it was La Negra Tilia. And I was like, this is such a beautiful song because I think it was written for mandolin. So that's why the melody is so tricky. It didn't even have lyrics and somebody else wrote the lyrics for it. I learned it and I started to do it at my concerts. That's the first time Javier heard me singing. He says that he found something that it reminded him to flamenco, to Andalusian influences, even though I wasn't raised with it. After that, I felt that connection and I just started to listen to Concha Huica, Sandra Carrasco, Las Migas. Of course, I went back to Paco de Lucia, Camarón. I think what now is happening with my music and my voice in particular, it's a mix of all of that. It's a mix of me growing up with Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, uh, Christina Aguilera, that may be the modern sound I may have in my voice. And then the Spanish part, which is my roots with the Venezuelan music. And then this new passion that I developed uh, for flamenco and for this other world. I think that it became a beautiful soup. There are no filters, I feel, in the, in the Andalusian music. That you can, we can be here right now and they can grab a, t a table and start singing for you and you're gonna, they're gonna bring you to tears. And that's what happened to me. We would be in a party and they would just start singing, just a guitar, no amplification, a voice and a guitar. And all of that so real, which I think nowadays maybe with the overproduction can be lost. I feel some people just wanna go back to that. And my generation, uh, I think has a big responsibility to do that as well. Uh, groups, for example, in Latin America, like Monsieur Perinet, this, this group from Colombia, they do the mix like of gypsy jazz with the roots. Uh, Natalia Lafourcade, which is a Mexican singer, she's also bringing back her roots with the traditional music from Mexico. I think people love that. That uh, honesty between the singer and the audience is very well needed. Volver a mi tierra is a song uh, that Javier Limón wrote. I remember he called me one day saying, Nella, I just opened the newspaper here in Madrid, and the first news I read was about Venezuela. And of course, they weren't good news. And it brought me to tears, and I just started to write these words for you. When I read it, I also started crying and answered back saying, well, I think we should just put music to this. And I said, okay, so maybe now I can just invite people, Venezuelans from all around the world, because we are right now all around the world. I called from my best friend since we were like three years old to one of the most famous journalists in Venezuela. And I had all of them lip singing a little bit of the song. And that's what the video is at the end. It's a song that talks about going back to our country. I'm able to go back. It's not that I can, but every time I go, I go afraid. We just want to go back and feel free and safe. It's a song that went from Javier's hands to my voice to my people. Having a mic, it's a very powerful thing. There are people that they don't have the, the voice to be able to say something. We as artists, I think we have that power and that responsibility every time we're on stage. 